close your eyes for a moment. We're gonna take a walk through your home. Bring attention to the walls and the ceiling, the beautiful paint colors that you picked out. Feel the warm air blowing through the vents. A sense of warmth rushes over you, thanks to all that insulation that surrounds you. Now open your eyes. Did you know that carpet's releasing flame retardants into your air? The walls and ceilings releasing VOCs. And if it's an older home, could contain lead or asbestos. Mold could be lurking beneath the surface. Fiberglass insulation releases known carcinogens. And all the while, our heat pump just circulates all this contaminated air. Way too many toxins are building up within our body. And they're making us sick. And even worse, we're becoming an indoor society, spending an average of 90% of our time indoors. Sick building syndrome is a real thing. And with all of this time that we're spending indoors, shouldn't we be expecting more from our built environment? This is an issue close to my heart, because at a very young age, I was forced to look at my childhood home not as my protector, but as the culprit in what had made my baby brother sick. Because of mold exposure in our basement playroom, he suffered a severe and traumatic asthma attack. I knew then that it was time that we began rethinking how our buildings are made, what they contain, and then what happens to them after their effective life. I knew that there had to be a healthier, more sustainable way to build. And I wanted to help in that healing process. I want toxin-free, low-energy methods of building that are going to help clean rather than contaminate our air. So I did my research, and I wanted to find the healthiest building material out there. It turns out there's an incredible one that so few people know about. It's called hempcrete. It's made out of hydraulic lime, water, and industrial hemp. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking right now. Is she talking about weed houses? <laughs> I know, hemp, it comes with that uncomfortable, yet incorrect stigma. Industrial hemp is just a plant whose cousin species happens to be marijuana. But with only 0.3% THC or less, I can assure you there are no psychoactive properties. Meaning that you can't sit on your couch with some industrial hemp and get the munchies. <laughs> I'm talking about a historical and agricultural crop that our beloved Thomas Jefferson grew right up the street at Monticello for many years. He used the superior fibers to make ropes and textiles. Now we just need our federal government to end this plant's prohibition. The great thing about industrial hemp being the main ingredient in hempcrete is that it's a rapidly renewable resource that doesn't require pesticides. As it grows, it breathes in four times the amount of carbon dioxide of trees and does this while remediating the soil. The carbon it absorbs is then locked up within these hempcrete walls which at the end of their life cycle can be returned back to the earth. How beautiful is that? This fireproof insulation is what makes up the entire wall cavity, which is essentially cast around the load-bearing steel or wood framing. The 12 to 16 inch thick walls are going to regulate indoor air temperatures, the relative humidity, are mold resistant, and are going to clean our indoor air. This is where our future lies building with nature. How would you like to stop paying for heating and cooling? This building doesn't require an HVAC system, partly because of Hempcrete's superior thermal performance. This home in North Carolina was built to LEED Platinum and Passive House standards, is carbon neutral, and was able to reduce its energy costs by 90%. This is a 42-home development project over in the UK, that set out to prove that you can build beautiful, contemporary, and sustainable housing that is also incredibly affordable. Hempcrete is an exciting 
innovative and healthy building material. These buildings are going to help heal our built environment. Because if not now, when? And if we're not demanding this, who's going to? One of the main problems, though, is that the United States is the largest importer of industrial hemp, because we can't grow it here. We have to import it from these 30 other countries around the globe. What are we waiting for? I hope that I've given you a few ideas today to reflect upon, and I'd like to close with encouraging each of you to challenge the status quo, lead with your values, and then build accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I've got, I've got two quick questions. I just had to ask. Okay. Where are they building a hempcrete home in America today? Well, there's actually very few hempcrete homes um, in America today, right now. But as we speak, there's uh, one being built out in Virginia Beach, um, which I'm going out next week to document. Actually. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, great. And I heard a rumor that you have one other little secret you could reveal too. Is that right? <laughs> Well, um, my entire outfit actually is made out of hemp today. It was uh, <laughs> a fashion designer in North Carolina was able to custom make this to uh, my measurements, so she sent it to me. To Very wear. cool. All right, yeah. thank you. Thanks so thank much, Jenny. So thank you.